Okay, so hot take. Um, the Kroll family now has a new grocery store. Yes. Yeah, and and there's and this is a significant difference. We know that there's inflation at the grocery store, and everyone, whether you're running for Congress or you're or you know you're out and you're trying to support a family, you know this. You know this. So yeah. What have we done, Kara? We switched. Somebody had said try Stop and Shop. And I used to go to Stop and Shop a lot. And then we just lived closer to Market 32. So we were going to Market 32, but I went to Stop and Shop and probably saved maybe 40 or $50. That's, yeah. It's huge. And and so we when we go, we probably spend about, what, 200 bucks on yeah. average because yeah. you don't you don't feed a family it, of but seven. That, that's a couple times a week we spend that, yeah. I would say. That's not one once a week. And I'm not. We're not plugging Stop and Shop because yeah. we're getting uh, paid by them. No. It, but we'll take the we'll take the <laughs> sponsorship if you want it. But it's just less expensive. It is. And we went yeah. to Market 32. And then Big Y. I, I, I would rank it this way. I would say Stop and Shop is probably the most affordable. Big Y is yeah, second. Yeah, that's second. Market 32. And actually, in some ways, Market 32 is as expensive or more expensive than Guido's. I would say because I went into Guido's too, and it seemed like certain things were cheaper. Like I get a lot of gluten free. Uh, items and they were cheaper there. Yeah. And the oat milk was cheaper. And that oat milk. Yeah. Is we love that in our coffee. Yeah. That's our new thing, oat milk. And I, and yeah. I think it, I hope it's not like almond milk or what's I the other stuff they find out later that it's like horrible for you. I just know I feel better when I drink it. So <laughs> I'm going to keep drinking it. So, Mike Daly. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? And everybody, and you know, I mean, he doesn't really need an introduction uh, to a lot of people, uh, a lot of our viewers. But Mike Daly is the host of It's Pittsfield Tonight, very well loved, followed, and uh, one of the biggest advocates of our community that I know, and um, someone who really deeply cares. Uh, so it's great to have you here, man. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's been a little bit since I've been in front of the camera. I took a big break. I know. Well, I, hey, listen, I've said publicly. I, I said, Mike, keep doing the videos. You did. Keep doing yeah. the videos. So, yeah. um, but um, but tell me what you're doing right now. Uh, I'm working for Pittsfield Rock. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm delivering, and that's really cool because I see everybody. They're like, "Hey, you're my you're my delivery guy." <laughs> 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 and it's really cool, and uh, and uh, I'm very grateful to to Ricky and Renee and uh, Ryan Robbins who who hired me. Uh, because they were a business that I worked with a lot, as you know. And absolutely. Yeah. And when I went to them, they were like, yeah, we'd love to have you. And he made it, made a spot for me. And I was very, very grateful for that. And they, they treat me great. And, uh, they're one of Pittsfield's longest running family businesses. They're coming up on their hundredth anniversary here as a family owned business. Yeah. Fourth generation. Yeah. That's cool. Mm. I, I look at local media. And in, again, Pittsfield Riot, you did a lot of work with them, other businesses. Um, you know that there is a dearth of media, traditional media outlets. And I think what It's Pittsfield Tonight did was absolutely fill a void. Now you can talk about like news versus opinion, versus, but like content is content. And if it's authentic, which in your case, authentic, I mean, it was your off an opinion but your view it was of things. it was listed as an op-ed it was always my opinion we, uh, we don't have enough of that I, I feel like people are almost afraid to voice their own opinion not, not just on a national level but it's it's really on the local I level too. there's a there's a I, lot of fear yeah, they yeah. should be <laughs> <laughs> well there you have it <laughs> good night everybody <laughs> <laughs> So what like, is the death by chocolate? What, it, what, it's what is like it? the real deal. It's a real chocolate based bread. It's not like white bread with some chocolate in it. It's chocolate based and it's like, it's just, it's death by chocolate, man. I mean, that's, that sounds like, good. The first time I went there as a customer and grabbed that, it became every week. That and the cinnamon burst. They, mm. They're just incredible. They make incredible French toast. It's just yeah. really cool. Mm, that's a good point. That's so, actually a so, good point. So the boys love French toast. Yeah. And we were talking about that. Uh, so we'll have to get some French toast bread. So they have Which I will plug that Marie's right across the street. Yeah. Uh, they make the cinnamon burst French toast from Pittsfield Rye. They do so mm. up there. Okay. Right, good to know. That's good to know. That's good to know.
I'll say this, you're a popular guy. And I feel like, um, you know, people resonated uh, with the fact that, um, you know, you, you were putting out content, but I think you were saying things maybe that people, other people are afraid to say. And I looked at the whole thing is it was community based. It wasn't about me. Yeah. Uh, it was my audience. We did stuff out in the public together. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a certain, gosh, I won't say I've said that before, but a, a, one of our elected officials who didn't mean anything bad by this, but we, we met, we had coffee and I asked that person, you know, what, why do you, I said, I don't know why so many people follow me. I was just trying to get some kind of response, you know? And he said, uh, well, you want my opinion? I said, yeah, I'd love to hear it. He said, I, I think they just like to root for an underdog. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I took that as a huge insult with a smile on my face because mm -hmm. the whole premise of the whole thing was doing work in the community. What we did with the Madison, the mural, uh, that was all through donations through Bart Razor and volunteers, Steph Quetty and the artists that did it. Uh, so many things, promoting the businesses, the, the Jimmy Fund events, the softball stuff, the Fish and Derby, the Harry Bateman Memorial Fish and Derby. And, that's the stuff I was proud of, but it wasn't about me. It was all of us together. Mm -hmm. And uh, seeing everyone out in the public is what made it cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I take that as a compliment. Uh, I, the I would, well, here's the thing. I, I don't see, I've never seen you as the underdog. I actually see you as a leader because it takes a lot to do the things that you've done, to, to put yourself out there and and speak, you know, for other people who who can't speak, um, in a, in a lot of ways, I'm and, one of those people though. I wear all my emotions on the outside, mm -hmm. and I don't hold back. And I didn't I didn't ever hold back in front of the camera. There were never notes or a teleprompter. Right. If I mean, my audience saw me happy, they saw me mad, they saw me mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. I watched some of those and went, "Oh man, did I say that?" <laughs> <laughs> but it was it. That was just it. It was yeah. all. There were times I'm sure I was completely wrong. There were times I was completely right. It was it was what it was. Yeah. Uh, I never looked at myself as the news. Uh, right. It was just my opinion, and I couldn't help it if some people agreed with me. Right. Uh, I just felt like just another citizen with a voice. Yep. And it's important for every you know people to have voices and people to have opinions. I mean, if everybody shared the same opinion, it'd be a really boring world. And I wanted a platform yeah. for other people to be able to express their opinion, to mm -hmm. feel like they were part of something. Because, yep. you know, I, I feel like there's not enough inclusiveness around here that if you say something like, oh, man, that pothole, you get, oh, oh yeah, be negative. I know. Negative. I know. Be so negative. <laughs> You're being mean to that pothole. <laughs> You know? so, uh, well, Kara has a pothole story. Uh, I mean, I went on Facebook. My number one, when I hit that pothole, it was, I was on my way to work and I'm like, I need to say good morning to 16 fourth graders. And my tire literally popped the minute I hit that pothole. It just, it popped and I made it. Luckily the, the car that I have, the tires that I have, the air, the sensor kind of makes it sound worse than it is, but I made it to school. I parked the car and I was just like, man. And I, my goal was to wait until I could get on my phone at lunchtime to let people know to be careful because I literally hit that and my tire popped immediately. And there were people that had their ideas of why I went on there to complain about the pothole. Yeah, there's but, always some sort of agenda yeah, behind they, letting they everyone know, know there's like a massive hole on Wool yeah, Street yeah. that uh, you want to avoid. But uh, but no, no, yeah. no, 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 you, you must have an agenda. Yes. <laughs> you targeted it. You yeah. smashed it. Yes. <laughs> yep. $500 later. There's this tone where it's kind of like, okay, so if you critique, you're suddenly negative, you know, somehow, you know. And so when you create an environment like that, when you create the situation where that's what we're working with then it's it's a chilling effect on on things so you know god forbid you critique somebody or something or or whatever it is whether it's taxes whether it's potholes whether it's bike lanes whether it's uh the schools or or anything then suddenly it's a chilling effect yeah. and um and that's and and the only one that benefits are the frankly the people in power that's that's just how it is you know, a few times 
I've taken pauses from the show and people have sent messages like, you know, and they mean well, they're like, don't let them get to you. This, that's impossible. Right. You take so much at times. You're like, I, why am I doing this? And it's brutal mm -hmm. at times. Uh, I couldn't not let it get to me. You know, I needed to, I needed to take a break. And of course I miss my audience. Uh, I love those people. They're like my family because again, I never looked at it as it was about me. It was never about me. I'm not looking to be popular. You know, I'm a recluse. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. I spend my time out in the woods with a camera chasing bears around. <laughs> uh, that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, my friends are geese and ducks. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because when we were up on that tree house, mm -hmm. we saw some very large hawks. Yep, two of them. And uh, and the, immediately as we were chatting with Mike, the first thing I thought of is, wow, you would have been able to get some really great photos up there because Mike is an accomplished photographer. And you've been published many times. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be published in some of our state stuff, Mass Wildlife, uh, some main stuff, but Nat Geo, Discovery, um, uh, some big stuff. And it was very flattering. But I grew up when I was real young. My father was the district manager and the fisheries biologist for Western Mass. So my house when I was a little kid was full of animals. I mean, owls, deer, foxes, everything. Uh, so I learned, I learned at a young age how to work with them. And my father couldn't afford daycare when I was really young. So the bunkhouse at fish and game was where I was. So I, I learned how to do river and, uh, shocking and lake shocking. And, uh, which is really interesting. There's electrodes that go into the water. No kidding. The fish come up, you learn how you scale them, you age them. Uh, and then you put them back, they shake it off, but they're, wow. it paralyzes them for seconds. Wait, so what are you doing with them when you, 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 you take a scale sample? Oh, you I age see. the fish, you weigh it. Uh, okay. I've seen bass that I've never were, heard when about I was a that kid, ever in my life. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, out of a nota, there's, I have a picture of it somewhere. I'm a, like probably five in that picture, but it would have been a state record bass still today if someone had caught it. Wow. It was 18 pounds, and I think the state record is 15.5. Wow. Uh, smart fish, it never got <laughs> caught. Yeah. Then we did that in Rivers and Streams. I won an award one year from the Boy Scouts, but the, there was a funny story with that. So my father's in front of me, and you got hip waders on, you know, and he said, whatever you do, don't put your hands in the water. <laughs> you know, and I'm young, and this giant bullfrog floats to the top, and I just could not resist. And the next thing I know, I was looking up through the water at my father coming down to pick me up. And I was, I mean, it just zapped me and I went down. And uh, yeah. as soon as he pulled me out of the water, there's all the Boy Scouts right there. And they could not stop laughing. It was really funny. But I learned that day, you don't put your hands in the water. Yep. Do it like, uh, no. But I ran the deer checking station with him, learned how to age a deer and do all that. Uh, it was yeah. really interesting. And that was the most emotional thing, that, that, one of the most emotional things I've ever been involved in. I mean, uh, you know, I came from the music world. I'm not a trained anything. And I encountered deceased people in there. Yeah. Uh, it was just unbelievable. It was like being in a refugee camp. I could not believe it was happening. Mm. Uh, and myself, along with Regina White, uh, took it upon ourselves and she had been an advocate for people in homelessness for a long time. And we took it upon ourselves to go through there with food and water. And it, when we realized how bad it was, and when we heard the stories about the way the shelter had been closed at that time, we found, somebody told us where the dumpster was with their belongings in mm. it. And, and in 96 degree heat, because that summer was brutal. Yeah. Regina and I climbed through the dumpster they allowed us to to retrieve belongings, clothing. We retrieved what we could because we were looking for wallets. They threw away everything, people's IDs. My wallets. gosh. It was horrible. Wow. Uh, VA cards, uh, medications. Oh my God. Should have never been put in the trash. Um, and, and we returned some of it. Uh, and then I'd like to think that we were the reason that we got the shelter back open. Yeah. And it yeah. stayed back open until they just recently moved. So another mm. three years. Yeah, my gosh. And um, and then, you know, and then, but 
you know, you have your perspective also in regard to the folks who are in Springside Park. Hey, They're gone now. They are gone now. They are gone now. It, it, now They're going to, the city's going to have to hire a hazmat team to clean that up. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, that can't be just city workers. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. I mean, yeah. you would not believe how bad it is. And so that's interesting because I've not been down there and I didn't hear anything yeah. about that. So um, there was another fire that nobody talked about. And the reason I know that is I saw it with my own eyes. Another propane tank exploded. There's a crater in the ground. Oh, wow. Uh, they actually built structures down there. And I mean, I, they were bringing fencing, metal, their bikes. I mean, just stuff everywhere. And wow. unfortunately, that little brook had been used as a bathroom for years three four years in there and they were washing clothes in there and i mean the environmental Jeez. impact of that is, i can only imagine mm. Mm -hmm. so i was told uh that the city is hiring a hazmat team that will come in they'll clean that up mm. and you know and that wasn't the only location i know there was um sort of an encampment at clap park oh uh still there, still there. Okay. um i know when you go to the boulders uh near taco bell actually up there mm, yes there as well um so i think i think it's it's one of those issues that it just went on for so long uh without anyone addressing it and again deal, dealing with compassion and and all that but at the same time your parks are they're, you know, they're, 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 they're meant to be a park there's a right. purpose for that and and, and, I, and i'll tell you the best debates that we had during the mayor's race were in this and 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 i know that i'm sure some people thought oh well mike was he gave the questions to this one or that one by the way mike didn't give any questions to anybody no. at all. and and you know and uh, and you didn't pull any punches you had good questions and i appreciate that as a former journalist yeah, you know, here's think... the funny thing I have to yeah, say yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Because Steve and me laughed about that. When the second debate, the internet was shut off. I didn't pay the bill. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and they were smart lights over the top of you guys. That's why it was dark. I couldn't turn them on because they were, I couldn't oh, wow. access the app. Yeah, I didn't and notice anything. All those questions I was pretending I was reading, I was pretending I was reading. There was nothing there. I was looking at a blank screen going, now what am I going to say? Oh wow! <laughs> I I just did it on the fly. So, but you're right. I would never have given yeah. anything to anyone. I wanted that to be, yeah. You know, it absolutely was, and and um, and that and that I very much can appreciate uh, for sure. Uh, that's you know, I I I look back at the campaign and those debates were the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They're the best. Yeah. You know, and and you know because they were real. I think the 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 questions came and Tara way in on this because you were yep. there during the whole campaign mm -hmm. but they they came I think in, in the most organic way uh as any question they were viewers questions correct they were people would well they were topics that a yeah. lot of people that yeah. I had been discussing and I knew that a lot of my audience wanted to hear that right. stuff uh and again I was just honored to be able to that you guys let me do that uh you know I didn't think you know mm -hmm. i was excited to do it and i mean yeah. i know somebody said it looked like you robbed a suit from the cemetery no. and i heard all that stuff and, and, oh my god <laughs> and, 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 and apparently i was late and oh no, because i do have to say it's my fault and i tried to uh. <laughs> well i oh, i said i think it's important because when you are doing something like that a debate and it's public and people are what you need to present yourself in a professional way and you always did that with the tie and the the suit and and that's important you know that it, it's i mean you guys know how yeah that setup uh i wanted it to be as i mean there was the clock on the wall steve mm -hmm. with the clicker which was awesome uh because <laughs> he clicked me then that one which was funny um i said you're talking too much click 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 <laughs> but i wanted it to be as professional as we you know and it was the podiums the lighting was. the everything you know yep and the um even the waiting area because i didn't go to the second one um uh, we had all the kids that night so I, we i was home watching but the first one i was in the waiting area with friends that came and it was even that was professional i mean we were sitting in there and we could hear it you know in real time and the reason i did that yeah. is because every debate you go to right the room is split in half mm -hmm. yeah and it's yeah. like you hear people when they come in like, which side are we on yeah, yeah. that's yeah. how it is yeah. and it's like 
they already know why they're why they're there. So yeah. I didn't want anybody eyeing the candidates down or right. sign or any I, so yep. that's why and, I said, and, and that does happen oh yeah. yeah by the way that does happen i mean we, <laughs> i mean i i remember in the bcc debate uh i was talking about you know the, the question that came up during the bcc debate was you know who do you admire mm-hmm. and who do i admire? well i was talking about my family you know right. because my family is very important to me and I remember there were people on the other side, like making faces and and basically mocking me yeah. um, during that, which was amazing that people, I mean, this is what politics can can do. Uh, but and I think but, every we also see that in any com- that. In, yes. in, in, in competitive situations. I mean, listen, we saw PHS, you know, a kid uh, unfortunately spit on one of our players from PHS oh, at, in in uh, in oh, the right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. So yeah. so these things. So when when people get high intensity and it's competitive they start to do things that they They wouldn't wouldn't normally do they wouldn't normally do um so it is interesting that you know and and honestly i always love debates and i always actually i would tell Cara, i said wait till this debate at uh, county community school i've never been at a debate at county community school that hasn't been a hot one you know and it was and it was was, was a hot one you know um i've been at the you know on that side (laughs) you're sitting with people and you hear oh yeah. oh yeah <laughs> and it's just like wow i mean it's <laughs> and uh and so yeah it, it, it's always a hot time uh there but you know and i and i think that you know that's kind of part of it but at the same time you know people yeah absolutely do things that they wouldn't normally do joyce slater said uh mike gave such an open honest forum to the candidates and it really gave citizens an opportunity to see into each candidate it was so valuable um carla uh Prendergast says the debates were very professional and very informative lynn fisher noel said uh the debates were awesome mm-hmm. and uh, i agree lynn fisher noel also said homelessness needs to be addressed before uh any uh rehab is done roseanne frieri said the uh sh- the city allowed that to get out of control and and i agree with that i think it just went on too that thing too with long. saint joe i'll yeah. tell you i'm never gonna let that go in the sense that they said that year that the Diocese of Springfield evicted them and they put a statement out saying, we have to be out by August 1st, 2020. Mm-hmm. I called the diocese. They wouldn't, you know, they're, who are you? Mm-hmm. This lady I talked to didn't want to say anything on record. She didn't want any problems. And I understood that, but I know what I was hearing. Mm-hmm. Nobody was evicted. They just, I won't go any further than that because <laughs> what happened is they reopened it and they remained there for another three years mm-hmm. until wow. they moved over here on Fence Street. Yeah. So that was the whole thing. I mean, and what the community did when I put that first video out and then I said, we got to help these people. If mm-hmm. you remember at the pavilion there, the donations got so big that the city stopped them. They said, stop. Donating. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were piles of food. People were showing up every day with food and water and clothing and tents. And it was, I thought it was great. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. but the whole premise behind that was not let's make Springside Park a the shelter place, right was, no right. we need to get them back into the shelter mm-hmm. uh next thing i know they're putting a porta potty in there and i was like wait a minute that's not oh. what i wanted <laughs> that's i just i thought this would draw the attention mm-hmm. to get it back open and it took a while to to mm-hmm. make that happen yeah uh candidates came down for pictures and opportunities to see my me. gosh oh it was horrible you know in looking back some of that was it, <laughs> some of the pot i remember so kennedy came and I think that was probably the one that uh, brought most attention, of course, because, you know, he was running for. It was uh, Kennedy and Adam Hines. Um, oh, okay. And uh, it, it was kind of strange because I think there was some feedback that, oh, they're bringing food and they're bringing milk. And like, well, where are we going to put this milk? It's going to, you know. A half gallon of half, apple cider. Half gallon. And, of, yeah. You know, whatever for some pictures. And then they had a full production team with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they were carrying yeah. boom mics. Can't, and I'm like. Yeah. So someone had come up to me and said, would you like to get a picture with Joe Kennedy? And I said, no, thank you. Mm. I'll just stay over here uh, and watch. Yeah. And that, and that's another, I mean, clearly one of those things that make people look at pol- politics and say, wow, very cynical, you know, very. And we cynical. had city councilors in there that were yeah. there as supporters of his. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as soon as he lost, that was it. And that was over. Nobody came back. And those people thought, oh, this is going to finally. And a couple of. The, the people that he took the opportunity to take pictures with were dead. One of them was dead within uh, uh, two months, and the other one was dead within three weeks. Yeah. And yeah. it was just, 
and you can see why people i mean people are very cynical um they are in a lot of ways and and car we hear this all the time Mm -hmm. people are checked out because they feel like it doesn't really matter like what are you going to do okay well you vote well does your vote even count uh and then at the same time it's like well no matter what happens in an election nothing really gets done anyway right. that's really that yeah there's a disconnect and and there are studies that show it by the way this is not this is nothing new that there is no connection between the views of for example a district in congress and how that congress person actually performs or doesn't right. perform in congress it's like mm-hmm. literally no connection it's it's you know statistically negligible um yeah. and that's really really sad and we gotta you know we got a real problem if you, if you believe in democracy. I don't have all the answers. I'd never said I was, a, you know, Mr. Newsman. I'm just another person who decided one day, hey, I have the abilities from working as a musician and working as a voiceover guy. Uh, it was funny. One of the our elected officials recently told me that they can't watch my videos because I have a horrible speaking voice and uh, <laughs> and I just repeat myself and make no sense. And I thought, I've done voiceover work for Discovery, for Disney. I was the voice for Remax, Keller Williams, Century 21, up through all of North America and English-speaking Canada. And that was the first time I heard that, Yeah, yeah. that, I, that I couldn't yeah. speak. Years ago, when we had our restaurant, I focused a lot on the reviews and there could be 25 amazing reviews and then two or three making fun of the artwork that I had on the walls. And the artwork was artists, local artists. And it's like, to, like I would lose sleep over it. And then it's it just, I got such a thick skin from that, that it, you know, going through the election with John and every, it, not a lot of things really but like I was just kind of like, okay, that's the only ones that bothered me were when they came from people in power that were elected. Yeah, uh, because their voice was influential. And I thought, what am I doing? That's that wrong. Mm. But th- this time coming back, I mean this, I, I will not go down that road again. Yeah. I just won't. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, when you put it in the context that, okay, well, if I'm doing something that is leading to someone else boycotting a bit and this is and this is literally something that did happen this idea that oh well if uh, mike daly is involved in a business or or what have you uh it, it should be boycotted um that is the most absurd thing i didn't know i was the terrorist uh, of I, this field. I, I and, and and to have you know elected officials kind of you know this uh, one uh, on uh, that well one. sort of commenting positively on that or or humorously on that uh sarcasm or otherwise it's just kind of like oh my gosh <laughs> but i did this, speak to all this of where them, we're at yeah. and i said listen yeah. i'm willing to put this up. let's end it let's end it i will mm-hmm. not ever go down that road again if you don't i won't let's end it yeah uh, and that's not what this is i'm not going down that road yeah but my yeah. audience never really knew what happened mm-hmm. so this was also through your show yeah just i disappeared and i know people think oh he does he's done that before uh, it's not that I'm more emotional than most people. I don't think it's just that I. It's all on the outside, all times. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have the ability to keep it in there. And you know what? That's an amazing thing for you to. Oh, I don't know about that. Be honest about oh, it. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Because, <laughs> like, I think you know when we're truly authentic and real, and we also acknowledge things that whether they're faults or whether, however you want to, like, but it's but it's real. Um, I mean, that's all a part of our growth. I think I was in mm-hmm. tears in one of my videos where it was it was that emotional for me because mm-hmm. uh, my father had just passed and and he was that whole thing and his name was being dragged in. And I was like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. wait a minute. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I in my younger years, people that knew me, uh, I'll just say that I, I used to like to scrap a lot. <laughs> 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 I was kind of known for that. And we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so it's hard for me at times mm-hmm. to just swallow it and people go, oh, don't let it get to you. You try doing that and having it not get to you. Mm. Uh, yeah. It does. It's yeah. it's it's an acquired <laughs> ability, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, it just, you know, it, people aren't built that way. I mean, like, right. we, we, Cara, you know, only, we you can only take so much in yeah. person. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you stay 
level headed. And I've said that to you before when we've talked. I go, John, I don't know how you do it because you've talked to me after sometimes there's a couple of drinks. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, the stuff coming out, I, I can't even say on here, but uh, and you're just like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I, I can't do that. <laughs> oh my gosh um lynn fisher knoll says consider the source people can be mean yes uh that is true uh melissa fawcett uh the reviews literally kill me it's the worst part of owning a business it is uh, oh man and that's the thing and i think that people don't realize you know if you go especially when there's a new a new place that opens and you got to give it a chance. You know what I mean? And a lot of times there'll be like a new restaurant or a new bar or, or a new, you know, new anything. And then people go to like the, the opening. It's like the first week it's open. And then at the first place they go is to the reviews. And it was like, nope, never going back again. This happened that. And it's just like, give them a chance. You know, it's well, not easy. Restaurants in particular, I, I think they deserve three chances. Yeah. You know, so, but I mean, of course, the only thing about that is, is that, hey, everybody has a budget. So, you know, you can only if, if and I can understand if you have a bad experience at a restaurant the first time, then it's like, oh, man, I only get to go out once every couple right. of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that. But, you know, it, there's that first round that a restaurant needs uh to kind of get their work operation. out the kinks work out the kinks yeah. i mean some of the the almost all the businesses i worked with were food related mm -hmm. yeah and you know i'll use porta via and dalton as an example they're great jay yeah. and donna would be in there i mean they're in there on their days off yep. they're in there early they're, they, they stay late they care so much about yeah. it but same thing you can get somebody that just goes in there and they didn't like the way the staff member looked at them for some reason. They th they take it personal and they have no idea how hard it is to run these businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it at Angelina's. They take so much pride and I deal with the owners. They're in their first thing in the morning. Yeah. I mean, they go through everything and, you know, it, you're right. I mean, those type of businesses get hit the hardest with yeah. reviews and mm. it isn't fair. No. Yeah. And if you get a, a bad review on the first round through, uh, it makes it so that, hard. It makes it so hard, and it can it can really take the business yeah. down. And um, we need businesses, you we know. We, we, we need. Businesses. I mean, well, listen, we have auto parts stores. Yep. We have car washes. We have car dealerships. What else do we need? <laughs> we need pothole filler stuff. <laughs> I'm going to open one called the Pothole Filler. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, I'm um, go out of my lane. Yeah. Well, look, I mean. We just need a, we need more, we need more in the way of like family things to do. And we talked about that during the campaign. Mm -hmm. So Melissa Fawcett, you're watching. I mean, we know, we, I always talk about her all the time and, and they do very, very well because there's a market for that. But, you know, it, obviously also there's a market for car dealerships yeah. and auto parts stores and car washes. Um, you know, I, anybody I, opening any business, uh, you have to applaud them because yeah. Oh, yeah. The, st sure. the stress and the hoops you have to jump yep. through. I have to admit it seems tougher here than any, yeah. like I was in North Carolina for a long time. Uh, as soon as you open a business there, I mean, the chamber of commerce sends you a gift basket Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they send you, how can we help you? They give you lists of people mm -hmm. that can assist you with certain things related to your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do free classes quarterly to help teach you how to market. Uh, I don't know if that happens here or not. I haven't seen it, but yeah. maybe it does somewhere. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 But you have to applaud anybody who mm -hmm. does anything for the community because if everyone just stopped, right. what do you got? I mean, even what you do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Kimberly Ann. Okay, this is a long comment, so let me read this. Uh, says, LOL, I'm working on keeping my mouth shut. Laffy face. Now, <laughs> PHS knows uh, where my daughter gets her mouth, and I swear PHS doesn't like it. LOL. I am my daughter's advocate. We are strong-minded. We are not rude, but we do speak our minds. My daughter is, in my opinion, a perfectionist, and her teachers agree. But yeah, if you speak your mind and the truth uh, or your opinion, uh, we do get judged. But uh, but there's a couple layers there on that. Number one, yes, speaking the truth mm -hmm. um, can be uh, your truth too. Your truth, uh, yeah. but also, I mean, advocating for your. I mean, Kara, you're a teacher, yep. so. Oh yeah, I I really welcome the parents that advocate for their kids, 100. percent You know, we need more parents to speak up. Yeah, honestly. I I think it's in in, in different districts. It's different. 
I think. Yeah. I don't know. I've worked in Pittsfield for 23 years. I don't know. I don't know how it is in other districts, but, and I, I have some amazing, I've had amazing families over the years this year. I have amazing families, but yeah, it's important for parents and, and guardians and families to speak up 100%. Yeah. Uh, Denise Marie says it is so hard. John Prohl knows my mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Denise, we love you. Um, Joyce Slater says, I love realists stand strong. Um, well, I, well, I, listen, I'm an optimist, but also, yeah, I'm a realist, but yeah. also, you know, we, we have spirituality too. Um, and I think, you know, there's karma. I think there is a level of things that are energies that are greater than, than what we see and what we feel. And, um, you know, and I think overall being a good person is on the long run, uh, not only better for you in so many ways but it's i think it's what we're meant to do mm -hmm. i think it's what we're meant to do yep raise the vibe in the decade of it's pittsfield tonight never once did i ever allow and never was there ever any national politics ever in yeah. nine years yeah, yeah. which is huge because that's it can get ridiculous i love my audience yeah. they're great yeah. people and it, like i said it's not just people i see names on there we see each other out in mm -hmm. public and when i called for rallies and stuff you know sometimes it would be me holding a sign by myself uh and sometimes there'd be 100 200 people that showed up so yep. mm -hmm. uh and again what they did at, at springside park i will never forget that i mean that mountain of it was a mountain of stuff they donated yeah. and every day they stayed on it and that showed me how awesome people are in this community well i was gonna say that that we do have we are very lucky because we do have a wonderful community here and they will rally yeah. when they're when they need to when something sure. big is happening but they have to be informed right. you know and you have some people in government that think social media is the problem and it's like really there was a time where they said mtv was going to destroy your kids <laughs> and then radio was the problem this, that's people yeah. that's their voices it's just a platform mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that is true, you know, and some people, if they're in a bad mood, I posted a bear picture the other day. Somebody said, Oh, you're going to get eaten. And, uh, every, <laughs> there's always that right. something, but for the most part, I think how you interact with each other, you can diffuse it quickly. Yep. Uh, mm. but social media is not the problem. No, no. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not particularly thrilled with the algorithm because I mean, it, it really, you don't see organic content anymore. You yeah, know, it's you, changed it, quite it, a bit. It, it, you know, and so maybe you see content from your top 10 yeah. friends or something that you yeah. interact with, but then uh, it, it's really, it's, it's well, not you just have to be way more strategic with what you're posting. And well, how you're posting, you're posting. But I mean, even if you're just a user who yeah. just wants to see right. stuff from your, you know, family or friends, you know, Facebook doesn't make it easy. Mm -hmm. no, no, it's the platform is changing. And for they businesses, they have to know that you have to understand meta tags and hashtags and the difference and how to. That's why when I watch like a, the city has a show, mm -hmm. somebody doesn't know. It's not the show. It's like you can't just you post something on Facebook and go, all right, now everyone's going to see it. It yeah. does not work that way. Yeah. Uh, you have to build those tags. I spent just on Facebook $48,000 in those nine years yeah. uh, just on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg, thanks you. He does. Yeah. That. That's why he was going to break my refrigerator. <laughs> I had to put that post to stop him from doing that. <laughs> uh, uh, Susan says, uh, Pittsfield wants business, but they don't make it easy to open. We have been jumping through hoops for over a year to open our new place. Okay. Um, well, hopefully we'll get some awareness out on there, uh, Susan, because this is something we heard so much um, from many, many businesses. Melissa Fossa says it was difficult for sure opening uh, a business in the city. Um, and we've heard her story uh, as well. Uh, so it definitely, and, and they go back and forth. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. kind of how it is. Um, unfortunately, you know, we were definitely wanting to work on that uh, last year. So we hope that maybe there could be some progress. On I it, agree. There has to be a plan. Yes. Like what types of businesses you want, mm -hmm. and then you can build around that. But you have to have some anchor yeah. businesses. Mm -hmm. And then- make room for the smaller businesses coming up mm -hmm. and they there has to be a group it can't be just downtown pittsfield because a lot of businesses feel like 
and I'm not, not knocking them, but they feel like if they're outside of downtown, they're on their own. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen so many businesses leave this past year. Mm -hmm. I hated to see currency coffee go. Yeah. That one really yeah. bummed me yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, um, And uh, when George came on here, we you know we laid it all out. Uh, yeah. And George was very honest about it. And he's always been that way uh, to his credit, uh, for, you know, for sure. And it was not uh, negative. I mean, he's he started a business here, but um, but he saw that you know over, especially with the rising costs of things, and especially when he was relying on a lot of other businesses to succeed for his business to succeed. And he was seeing a number of his vendor or his uh, uh, customers rather going out of business or reducing what they were ordering. And that's a sign of what's happening, mm -hmm. you know, as they're reducing their, their orders, um, that's not a good sign. Uh, so he saw that and, uh, you know, George is a good businessman. Yeah. And um, he, he had to make that move and he had to make that move. Yep. And he knew it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it just it it sucked to lose him, but I'm sure for him he made the right choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I I think that um, you know, it, <laughs> uh it is good to have open uh dialogue and to be comfortable with that and not have to worry about retribution. Mm -hmm. Um and I think uh that's one of the things that this community has frankly struggled with. Tell me about what it's like to be able to work in a job where you're more physical. I love because it. I, 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 and I, I realize how out of shape I am. <laughs> uh, I compare it to the body of someone who's been in a coma for 10 years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I struggle with that. The first week was torture for me. I mean, I collapsed when I got home. I was like, oh my yeah. God, I picked up 14 pounds today twice. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. Well, but I was, I realized how out of shape I was and, but now I love it. I mean, it's fast paced and you're loading, delivering, you're going all over the county. I want to see people happy and I want to be happy living here. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, there's so many good, they're good people, man. We, mm -hmm. the, the people that have hung in with this community, Yes. The one, there's so many that could just throw in the towel and mm -hmm. head for Florida, yep. but they want to be part of this and they want to see it succeed. And I think that's what pushes me. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the Robbins family that owns Pittsfield Rye Bakery, four generations since 1929, mm -hmm. they could move anywhere else mm -hmm. and they know it, uh, but they love being here. It's their home. It's their community. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing. What we saw with George, you know, you don't want to see more of that. And that's why I push because the average person will go, yep, you can have it. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he did, yeah, he did a tremendous job. And I think, I think that there's something to be said for that because if you're a business owner who succeeds in Berkshire County, you yeah. are, you know, for, and again, understanding that uh, we do have access to greater markets and, you know, I, I have a marketing agency and I have the ability to do work with people all over the country because I'm not locally based mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm not making bread locally and delivering right. it, you know? Pittsfield Rye is is contingent on local people unless they're shipping it, to, you know, unless they're drop shipping. They do, you know, which they do some of that. Huge customers, yeah. but they want to yeah. give back to the community, and that's a big mm -hmm. part yeah. of it. Even with their retail store, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, there's some advantages there if you have a a business that can be, you know, you can do it all over the world. Um, mine is mostly digital, uh, mm -hmm. and and that sort of thing. But with that said. If you are a business that is succeeding uh, in Berkshire County and you're a newer business, and it is tougher. It is yeah. tougher. So I credit uh, business owners around here. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not easy. Well, what Rick did when they, you know, Pittsfield Run was a staple of East Street forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the change he made and the risk he took and that. I mean, you could tour that place. The first time I went so in, did there, they oh, have that was the building on the corner, right? Oh, the yeah. blue and white building. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My dad used to take me in there. Yeah. And we Cupcakes. would get they made the sugar cookies. All my the sugar face cookies. And we would sit on the swivel stools and look out the window. I loved it there. I could now through this massive that's what they were. Yeah. production facility. It's impressive. Absolutely. No, when we were at uh, you know, PHS, you know, we'd walk there. For, lunch get a, yeah, get a cupcake oh, or wow. you know something like that but yeah they, they've totally upped their game uh mm -hmm. you know since then i remember at one point i think a car 
had run into many Joe times. That was a Ryan common Curry. thing. Uh, and and I think maybe one of the last times they kind of they were like, all right, we're we're done with the storefront here because that's just not going to. Imagine to work. sitting there when that happened. I mean, <laughs> oh my god, I know because the seats were right there. Yeah. We would go in there and get the happy face cookie and. But fun. that building more happy stay. face cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. So, well, Mike Daly, we've been on the air for about an hour and a half uh, between our three videos. <laughs> three videos. One, one of it sounded one, like this. One with half. Yeah, one with <laughs> <laughs> one with a little bit of no sound. The second one with no sound, and then the third one we figured it back out. Yeah, but, which we uh, still don't know what happened. If I offended <laughs> any politicians, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I, that was not my intention. <laughs> Uh, hopefully I didn't. I uh, think you're all wonderful. Yeah, well, they should have thick skins because yeah, you know, that's what they signed up for. So um, it's good stuff. So Mike Daly, I I wish you the very best um, yes. with Etsy Rye and uh, everything that you're doing. Um, you know, we appreciate your voice. Um, I think you should you know keep doing videos. I think you Definitely. can you know, if 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 that's what you choose to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and I, I have feel... some cool music stuff coming up. Yeah, I've yeah. put a new band together. So oh, good. What's the band? It's it's going to be a surprise. But okay, I, I've got some serious players involved in this. And, Very uh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, we'll probably. I don't know where we're going to debut yet. We've talked to a few people, uh, and this will be my first time back because my last time on a stage was probably in front of twenty thousand people. So this is going to be different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah. Who knows? It might even be a, a, an exclusive thing at Porta Via. I love Porta Via. Yeah. I love Jay. I know that's Dalton, but yeah, you know, that's all right. I love Jay. We'll be seeing you soon, everybody. Thanks for hanging in with us. And uh, this is the blend. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. <laughs>